I'm Magnus Walker and I've been obsessed with Porsches for the past 45 years. I've built, collected, driven, raced and restored quite a lot of P cars in my time. But this show is all about other people's Porsches. So take a ride along with me as I find out all there is to know about OPP. a thermal race track with a crash helmet and some race gloves to drive this, the new 992 GT3 RS. Fitting that Porsche has chosen to do the press launch of the GT3 RS, the really special model, at the racetrack. Because I've often said the GT3 itself is perhaps too much of a race car for the street. There it is, the first session on track in the GT3 RS. The third and well, now the back straight into the braking. Hopefully they brake a little early. Still getting used to it. Head up, head up, head up, go, 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 go. This, this one keeps going and going, feeding in the power, which is idea. Loading up those side walls, got the big air moving on the pipe. Head up. Lots of tire noise here. Get all through. Getting hot in here, I gotta say, with the sweater on. Okay, breeze. Three, two, one. So like all varieties with Porsche, you get a lot of options. You can get the base model if there is such a thing as the GT3 RS. Then you can upgrade to the Visac package, which adds even more lightness, even more exposed carbon, a choice of magnesium wheels. And then for the domestic US market only, you can get what they're calling the Heritage package, which is a tribute to the 73 RS Carrera, the iconic Carrera, the first 911 to use the words RS, not for really special, but for rally sport. This version just comes green with painted wheels, green deviated stitching. It is the Visac package. You can't get this car unless you have an allocation for the Visac package. All right, so the heart and soul of any 911, any Porsche in fact, is always the motor. No different in the 992 GT3 RS, 4 litre natural aspirated 6 cylinder, 518 horsepower, 343 foot pound of torque, which is really, let me tell you, I haven't done one session, it's plenty. With all the aero, all the downforce and all the mechanical grip that this car's got, it's certainly a beast on the track. But let's talk about where it really comes from, the motorsports division, and it raises the question, how much different really is this to the cup car that it came from? For the first time in a GT3, the smart engineers at Porsche decided to get away from, get rid of the three radiator cooling thing and go motorsports derived, big single radiator here with all this ducting, channeling, you know, hot air out and releasing it. What that did by having the big radiator is obviously you lost the front trunk for your weekend getaways, but that's not what this car is about. It freed up room here behind in the wheel arch to actually do a whole different from A-arm, which we'll get into. As you can see, there's all types of diffusers directing air both in and out, bringing warm air that's coming out from the radiator, actually getting bypassed over the roof and channeling it away from the engine intake, which is down here. First time ever in a GT3, it has active DRS, which comes in under a certain few parameters automatically. Let me see right here, because I'm trying to remember it. Accelerator pedal 95%, speed over 90, 62 miles an hour, revs over 5,500, and a lateral G load of 09. That comes on automatically, or you can actually change it here with this DRS button. First of all, these three modes, street race track mode right here, and then there's all these traction control, adjustable dampenings, rebounds, how you want the rear diff to sort of load up or unload, really depending on what type of track environment you're on. 
as we're not really going to be able to see this for the first time ever we do have the full underbody panel lots of homework here on these porsche press drives for me i'm not so much about doing homework schools out it's more about seat of the pants feel and could you actually live with this on the street obviously it's highly capable on the racetrack So here's my cheat sheet. Getting rid of the two in the wheel wells allowed Porsche to do back to the cheat sheet more of this double wishbone front suspension where you can see in detail what it has. But apparently it just increases a lot of downforce of the front axle by approximately 88 pounds. Okay, here's more homework. You know, I'm still about schools out. There's plenty of stuff you've got to adjust here. You might almost need some sort of computer technology or the ability to sort of decipher what all these things do. Probably need a Porsche engineer or a spirited race car driver like Patrick Long or Jörg Bergmeister to really talk us through what all these settings do and how it actually feels. So I'm gonna have the pros explain that to me later on. But we go to dynamic before you were in, in, the, in the standard ESC settings, um, dynamic is okay. And TC is there. And then when transmission, are you in manual sport plus or just automatic? I usually shift by myself, so I use the pedal. Okay. Um, well, I'll follow. Yeah. Good. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. So I've done 25, 30 laps or so on track in the new GT3 RS, but now perhaps it's time to talk to the on-hand Porsche factory motorsports race car drivers, Pat Long and York Bergmeister, and just have them tell me their thoughts on the car. All right, guys, Patrick, Jorg, professional Porsche race car drivers. You know your way around the cars and the track. We've driven. My question really is, track focused, how does this differ from the cup cars that you race? Uh, I think the biggest thing is, thank you, Jorg. The biggest thing is uh, technology. Okay. Uh, differential, uh, active aero, uh, lots of things that aren't really technically allowed um, in racing. And so there's a, a few more creature comforts, if you will. This is more advanced in a way than the, than the cup car, you think? Yeah, definitely more advanced, more technology in the car, a lot more downforce in the car. So especially in the quick corners, uh, the GT3 RS is quite a bit faster than the current cup car, you tell which me is this, impressive. You tell uh, me this has more downforce than the cup car. Yeah, But that's probably due to the regulations of that so, series, um, right? You can compare the GT3 RS with a Le Mans spec RSR wow. on downforce. So wow. that, I think, tells the story. Wow. That's really all I need to hear. Give me some driving impressions, though, on this track as to how fast it is, how capable it is. <laughs> yeah, the main difference is rear stability. Okay. Um, sending the car in, off brake, lots of rolling speed, and the rear just follows the front. Um, you know, the 992 GT3 was already such a big step forward. Super capable. Yeah, and this is already three times the downforce of that car, so almost 2,000 pounds of downforce. We keep coming back to that. What is downforce? It's like turning an airplane wing upside down. Basically, the faster you go, the more you're getting... Stick. Yeah, the more you're just push. getting grip. Now, I, follow, I tried to follow you, both you guys around. It's really difficult to keep up with you. You seem to have two different driving styles. He's taking a boatload of curb. You're not taking quite as much curb. Can we talk about driving styles a little bit and how it affects the car in the sense of what you can fine tune on the car? There seems to be a lot of a adjustment availability that I don't quite understand. Maybe you can explain it to me. Yeah, I mean, my personality is a little more flamboyant, <laughs> but Jurg's driving style is much more flamboyant. It's sort of like that scene in Days of Thunder where it's like 50 laps his way, yeah. 50 laps yeah, my yeah, way, yeah. or loose is fast, but on the right. edge of out of control. Right, two completely that's different him. lines. That's like, he, he's the, the curb meister is what I'm yeah, calling exactly. him. Yeah, the curb Jurg meister. Kurt meister. Well, that's what I was calling him. I just like to use a full track, so okay. it's there, so you might just want to use it. That's my take on it. I used to think smooth was fast, but then I took the hot lap with him and I realized, you know, however he's driving was really, really fast. Well, still pretty smooth, so yeah. just a lot of curve. Yeah, a lot of curve, a lot of curve. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the, the dynamics of the car and what can be adjusted in the car when you're driving versus you come in and tell, hey, I need more traction coming out of the corner. How, how do you set it up? Basically, um, you can adjust anything from the steering wheel. You can adjust the dampers and compression and rebound. Uh, you can adjust the differential on coast and on power, obviously. You have seven different settings for traction control, wow. two different settings for the ESC. 
uh, so you name it. Um, you can do anything from the steering wheel, which is a big step forward and basically any d race car driver's dream come true because uh, usually you have to go in the pits to make a change and you can do everything while driving. So you hit a point right there, Porsche is saying track focus, but there's no race series for it, but it's faster than certain race cars. Should there be a race series for this car, you think? I'm sure a lot of people will, will take it to the track and do club racing with it um, and step, definitely capable of to do that, it's a proper downforce car. So, uh, I mean, you look at it, it looks like a race car and feels like one. Yeah, yeah. Is it too much for a race car for the street though? It's wide, you know, give me your thoughts on how it is on the street. Has anyone driven it on the street yet? Uh, yeah, we've that. both driven the cars okay. on the street. Um, it's certainly extreme. I mean, it's naturally aspirated, so it makes its power up top. Yeah. It's rock and roll, it's right. loud pedal. Um, I always say though, how much time do you spend up top, of, you know, above 7,500 RPM to 9,000 on the street? Well, it depends what your you speed go. limit, your yeah, local speed yeah, yeah. limits are. Well, of course, of course, um, we're all about speed limits. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. It really is, it's like a two-stroke dirt bike. It wants to rev, rev right. it, you want to push it, and it's just one of these cars you can take to the, to the track and push it all day long at red line shifts. The harder you drive it, the happier it is. On the street, it's a little bit more docile, but you can back all of that damping out, which is new for this car, and really make it like a daily driver a lot softer. Okay. But uh, certainly the canyons is where it rips. Let me ask you a question though. If there's an Achilles heel, is it the lack of bottom end torque? And talk to me about the development. Have we maxed out the potential of the four liter naturally aspirated engine? Because it doesn't actually make much more power than the prior generation. And in reality, it seems to make less torque due to a different cam profile. What are your thoughts on the actual drivetrain? We know it's faster with downforce, adjustability, DRS, but talk to me about the drivetrain. Is that enough for the street on the bottom end? I mean, Jörg, Jörg can add more to this as he was a lot more involved in the development, but um, in my opinion, it's really a track-focused car. And the optimal rev range and power band is up top because on a racetrack, yeah, as yeah, you know, you it's like building it air-cooled engines. You want to build that top end peaky cam. Uh, down low, it's not the quickest car in torque, but uh, give me a race on a track and I'm going to beat you in this course, car. Of course, of so, course. Yeah, and yeah. the nice thing about this is that it is track focused, but you can drive it comfortably to the track, AC on, and then run it all day on the same tire and then drive it home. You don't need a trailer or a crew. I'm laughing on it because the first thing I had my sweater on and the AC wasn't on and I was actually sweating. And then I got in the car a second time, I'd taken the sweater off and someone was smart enough to put the AC on. That wasn't me. So, uh, Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's super, <laughs> super nice. All right, any final thoughts and then we'll wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, we were talking about power. Obviously. Yeah, talk about uh, power. Emission regulations are not getting any easier. So therefore it's a, it's a really hard job for the engineers to get the power out of the engine. Um, so. They, I think, did a very good job um, keeping it at that much power was fulfilling the current uh, emission regulations. Could this be the last hurrah of the naturally aspirated non-turbocharged motor? Could this be it? It seems it's the pinnacle, like it's plowed out, out on performance from the drivetrain. Could this be the swan song? We will see. Derived heavily from Porsche Motorsports 911 RSR and GT3 R Cup cars, the new 992 GT3 RS is way more of a track car than it's ever been. It's easy to get caught up in all the excitement on track. The sights, sounds and smells, engine screaming, exhaust barking and melting rubber to name a few. The new GT3 RS covers all the sensors. It looks outrageous and fast, sounds awesome, feels epic and smells like performance. But it's also all about A, B and D. Aero, brakes, and downforce. It's as Porsche Factory Racer your Bergmeister told me. Trust the aero and downforce. But he wasn't wrong. The deceleration from 130 plus miles an hour was staggering, stable, and effective. Something I had not experienced before in a 911. The type of G-force that shocks and surprises. And talk about the ability to lay brake. If you have the confidence, of course. The aero and downforce in corners allows you to carry more speed than my brain could comprehend. More speed than I dared to imagine. And this was extremely apparent when you all tucked me out on a hot lap. Do you want to ride in that hot lap? Yes, we yeah. do? Yeah. 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 That'd be awesome. Show me what it can really do. <laughs> we'll try it. <laughs> Humbling to say the least, the type of lap that shows you what the car is capable in the hands of a factory race car driver. 
York was aggressive, confident, and mind-bendingly fast. <laughs> Extracting all that the car could give, it really opened my mind to the performance of the car on track and made me think that the car's level of peak performance was above my ability and probably that of most of its owners. A lot of curb! Yeah. <laughs> it's free track, so you might want to use it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tires were probably getting a little a little hot, right? A little loose. Yeah, at the beginning of the lap, there was still a lot of pickup on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, pressure's a little on the high side. Yeah. Well, that was fast. Through that chicane where I'm always lifting, you are dead flat. Push. Almost, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's hooked that's, up. That's where you really just need to be. Uh, the trust in the downforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the car is actually capable of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's impressive. Uh, Cheers, man. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you. The car gives you confidence right away to push harder, brake later, and get on the gas earlier. But what I needed to do was recalculate my brain and up my game, trust the car, and carry more speed. Something that's easier to say than to do right away. It needs to be worked out in incremental steps, one lap at a time. With all this performance, grip and capability that the car has, it's actually quite a physical workout on the body. Under these extreme loads of acceleration, braking and cornering, and to run long stints, you probably need to be really, really fit. Naturally, this had me thinking, who's buying the car and doing track days? Who has the time? And more importantly, the skill level to get the most out of the car. The really serious racers no doubt already have a cup car of some sort and are probably competing in some form of sanctioned race series. So is the GT3 RS aimed at the track day enthusiast or the guy that's going to take it to the cars and coffee? Word on the street, or I should say the track, is that this car is as fast as the cup car. And Porsche is promoting the GT3 RS as a track-focused car. The cars that I drove today at the Thermal Racetrack though were Euro spec cars with roll bars, and it's interesting to note that the US spec cars, and let's not forget this is Porsche's largest market, are not available with a roll bar from the factory due to US safety regulations. So you'll have to go to the aftermarket supplier to get your roll bar and six-point harness before hitting the track. I mean, safety first, my friend. So obviously the car is fast on the track, but how will it be on the street? The environment where perhaps we'll see the most of them is wider than ever and with all the go faster aero bits and that huge wing, it's going to draw attention and maybe it'll be a little bit tricky to move around, especially on LA's notoriously choppy and uneven streets. Peak horsepower of 518 is only marginally more than its predecessor and torque is surprisingly down a few pounds as the result of a new cam profile, valve train and tune that allow the engine to rev to 9000 RPM. As always so, not too much time is spent that high up the rev band on the street, unless you happen to be on your favourite open mountain road, where no doubt the GT3 RS would have been most happiest in its off-track adventures. So could this be the final swan song for the naturally aspirated 4 liter GT3 RS? Only time will tell.